are liabilities with the disc in their hands. They get it, you pressure them, and right in their face. Rise above, we're gonna rise above. Rise above, we're gonna rise above. The next person would come up, cut up the side. The next person would come up, cut up the side. Go out there. They're intense, fiercely competitive, abrasive, and not surprisingly, they're all New Yorkers. It's really an interesting, almost sort of master's thesis kind of um, issue. Is, is, is sports get bigger, do they get better? looking for that. Now, unless you've been locked in an attic room these past three decades, you'll know what one of these things is. In fact, most of you have probably thrown one, and chances are you're wondering how on earth it could form the basis of a world championship sport. Well, that's because most of us ordinary human beings make the mistake of calling this a frisbee and associating it with activities like this. Whereas an increasing number of frighteningly dedicated people prefer to call it a flying disc and do things like this with it. This is Ultimate, a team game with more than 30,000 players worldwide, although players may be putting it too mildly. In the final stages, Sweden went up against Canada, with America playing Germany. We joined that game with the USA leading 13 points to 7. The commentators for the game are the U.S. Masters captain and veteran player Andy Borenstein and Simon Cross. USA ready to throw off. It's number 24, Amos Himmelstein, who gets things going. It'll be collected by Germany, passing it upfield, down through the middle, using Bernd Larisch, who is a stocky, aggressive-looking character, but always adheres to the honor system prevalent in Ultimate. He's got the disc again, plays it nicely this side out to the right wing. Germany showing some good passing movements, not really strong enough though to hold the US, who are the best passing team in this tournament, without a doubt. Germany though, have been running US close in the early stages of this game. Good diving grab, but as he hit the ground, just let it slip out of his fingertips. A bit of a shame there, because it looked like Andrea Stryger had done everything right, and USA so quick again to pick up the advantage and throwing that one down into the end zone. You'll see that ha happen all afternoon long. US will just take advantage of German mistakes here. Joe McCune, you see on the replay, picks it up about 30 yards out and throws a backhand for the score to uh, Ron Papanak for the US. They're now up 14-7. Dennis Wilson goes inside, and USA go long again. It's still not quite into the end zone. Basta was free there for a minute, but they couldn't find him. 
Now look for Warson. He dies well. What a good take by Warson, who seemed to suffer for his skill. But that was a great take by the tall number 69 for USA. In case you're wondering, by the way, the teams change ends after every point to cancel out any possible wind advantage. All right, back to the game now, with America leading 2013, one point away from victory. Germany trying to put pressure on the USA. Good diving attempt, but a fumble. So number 69, Dennis Warson, gets things going for the US. Immediately turns it over, though, to Germany. Poor play there by the USA who found it difficult to decide exactly what play to set between themselves. Perhaps a little bit of leadership needed for the US team. And that one comes forward, good play by Larish, and he finds his man inside the end zone. Piper with a goal, another for him. And Germany keep it close again, they've edged up to four teams. USA on 20, still just one point away from victory. Guys, take it easy, take the easy one, let's go! Come on, New York, 100%! U.S. will start from their own goal line, needing one point to win. Looks for the hammer throw, not going to get it. Goes instead, sidearm, up towards Warson. USA star player, he goes long, it's a great chance, this will finish it off. Great pass by Warson, good pancake catch at the other end from John Gueweth. The youngster makes the play, and USA win it 21-14 to make the final. Time for the second semi-final now. We join the game with Canada in red, level with Sweden at 16 all. The captain raises the disc and backhands it down the field. Canada's number four, Adam McKinty, added to the on-field players. The heavyweight presence of McKinty could it be important in this close game. Ericsson, captain, gets that in towards the end zone. That's going to be a goal, good goal for Sweden. A set play off the uh, pull, the throw off, throwing to space to Danny Erickson here on the right side. He throws a finger flick beautifully down the field. It must have been about a 45-yard toss to a streaking Namir Yunan to make it 17-16. Dave Pelletier. We'll get things rolling again here for Canada. They know they're that's just two points away, and that's a terrible time to turn over. And Sweden now have a great chance to draw it level once again. And you see how slowly Sweden is uh, walking up to approach the disc. They have a set play in mind. This is critical. This could bring it to 17-all. Not surprisingly, it's Anders Juran Ray who starts with it. Straight inside, that's a touchdown, that's a goal, and it's level again. Perfect play, as I suggested. They were waiting for a break out of the stack. Number 13, Michael Forsgren. We've been calling his number all day long. Wide open on the right side to receive a beautiful four-handed throw. The game is now then to 19. Because of the time cap, these teams have been playing for over two hours and 10 minutes, which is the maximum they can play. It's the first now to 19. Either team just two points away. Sweden with the pull, tied at 17s. And this one stays in the air a long, long time before it finally comes down to play fair. He'll let it drop. So a successful pull by the Swedish side. Playfair, his options cut down very well there by the captain Ericsson of Sweden. He has to eventually go back to Nichols. Al Nichols, who made the play of the game, only to see it nullified by a call way back at the other end of the field. Captain Phil Roger, finding it difficult to find a man free, eventually goes out to Oldenburg burst onto the scene when he is 15, and that's the sort of play that Oldenburg likes to make, the long, spectacular play, but it was not accepted that time very well by Andrew Lugston, under some pressure from the Swedish defense, and Sweden have possession. And they quickly move it upfield, Simon. No stoppage of play here, they want to keep running. Michael Forsgren goes back to the man who's been so vital for every play. And they're going game. up long with it, and here's someone wide open. And there's a score, that's Sweden's first lead of the game, Simon. Number 13, Forsgren, again, 
playing perhaps the game of his career out here today. This O line's gonna do it, guys. Ours, guys. One, this O line's gonna do three. it. Victory is ours! Where's the water? Come on, Red, whoever wants, come on. Captain Danny Eriksson for Sweden, so much a part of this side. He's had an inspirational game, led by example, gets that out to perhaps the pick of the rest, and is Joram Ray, marked very close by Pelletier, who's had more and more to do in this Canadian side as the game grows older. A chance here for Forsgren to find his man. He does so one point away. Sweden need 19 to win. They lead by 18 to 17. Good passing work here. Again, it's Joram Ray down to the left wing. They're getting ever closer. A chance here, a great chance for Sweden. Eriksson makes the final play, and there will be a dispute on that one. Yes, there's a travel, I'm sorry, a pick call on the goal scorer, number 10, I believe, Eriksson. No a pick, by the way, is when a player not holding the disc or marking the person with it cuts across his opponent. So that finals. point doesn't count. I, I'd say they're gonna look to, er they could look to Eriksson for a upside down hammer throw to that left corner. So Playfair has to watch him very closely. Just a little bit slow getting off the mark here. Here's a chance. Not in. Not in. Looked like he just might be able to keep that foot back. And again, there's a dispute. But the this goal. time the dispute is settled in Sweden's favor. It's the point in. stands and they're it's in the over. final against Sweden America. The world final is a real clash of ultimate philosophies. The Swedes are almost military, with regimented practices, close attention to detail, and tight discipline. Vi har sett dem springa långt, knappt springa killa. Vi rycker för någon direkt nu med stor entusiasm och en härlig glädje ute nu killa. Fan går vi ut och gör detta till riktigt god match. The Americans are a little looser. Their tournament regime consists largely of a diet of hip-hop, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and a little pre-game primal scream therapy. One, two, three, defense! Big Denny Wharton for the USA raises a disc, and the 1994 ultimate final is underway with the USA pull. First possession end to Sweden, and they take it on the fly and get things going in transition play, moving quickly to give their forwards a chance to get free. It's exactly what happens with a great interception straight off there for USA and John Gilbert. He plays that one forward. USA moving immediately, but a second turnover in quick succession. Sweden will have the play, but there's a stoppage already, Andy. Yes, there's a foul on the play. The Swedish defender fouled Blair O'Connor on the US. He hit him on the arm. It's a replay, and they're putting the disc in in a moment, Simon. O'Connor goes to his side, slightly behind, finds Gewurz. O'Connor, just outside, tries to go low, cut inside to Wharton, goes in fact the other way. Here's the first goal of the game, USA score, 1-0. Yes, Aram, uh, excuse me, Juan Flores with the goal. A, a finger flick pass by Blair O'Connor, got caught up in the wind, and Juan Flores made a great grab. 1-0, US. to pull for USA, leading by one goal to nothing. This is a good one, it's nice and deep, it stays a long time in the air, it'll fall into the end zone, and that gives both teams time to set up a play, and Sweden will start with a disc from their own goal line. Thank you. 
Sweden start with a disc. The offensive player has six men ahead of him. It's seven aside in ultimate. They move the disc with short passing. Sweden will look for the opening. They like the long pass after a few short defensive passes. There's no one open at the moment and a stoppage on the play. And it's perhaps a star man from the semi-final against Canada, Anders Yurambre, who gets things going there. He'll try and break forward and get into the offensive end of the field as Sweden build from the back. Again, quite slowly, looking to make short passes, just keep possession. They trail by one goal to nil. That one's forward is another great interception by US, and that's the second of the game for Gewurz. Really doing well defensively, and US have a great chance here to go 2 nothing up. The player stumbles, though, and unable to make the quick play he might have liked. Right on the goal line. A great opportunity for Skip Kuhn to set something up here for US. Goes outside, and that was a bad play because Andy Sheeman had to try and reach for that one. It was always flying away from him, unable to make the grab, and it goes back to Sweden. Sweden will be relieved there because they never should have turned the disc over in the first place. Slightly more cautious this time, the Swedes. Going backwards. Again, another pick call here. John Gewurz, the U.S. defender, was picked in the middle of the field. Sweden moving right to left. The players just sorting it out between themselves. No referees in this sport. It's the honor system, the spirit of the game, and Sweden get going again. A Good great, great block there by Kevin Rhodes. They nicknamed him Dusty. Dusty Rhodes. Skip Kuhn then with the throw in around the midway point goes backwards and oh so many turnovers in this early stage of the game and that was Danny Erickson the first real sign of him in this game so impressive and such a large part of this Swedish team diving in there to make the block and Sweden have the possession back it's with Anders Juramre he goes inside over now to the right wing and Frederick Hedstrom, 24-year-old from Gothenburg. Most of these players come from the Gothenburg area, although they're made up as a national side from all points of Sweden. And that's a throwaway. A lot of turnovers in the early stages of this game. Both teams perhaps finding it difficult to find their teammates in these early stages. Skip Kuhn then, in the center of the field, goes short to Denny Warson. Warson takes his time, he's got 10 seconds to get rid of it. Does so though in plenty of time. Frees it to Dave Babcow, the law student. Gets it to the hardware store owner. That's Tony Sheeman, the New Yorker. Gets that forward. Nice play inside. Great goal, US. 2-0 they lead. A perfect play by Dave Babco, throwing it about 30 yards to a streaking Skip Kuhn. It's now 2-0 U.S. USA to throw off again, leading by two goals to nil. This one stays low, comes down fairly quickly, so Sweden have a chance to build here before the US defense gets properly set. Going to the flanks. Swedes desperately need to get back into this game before US establish a early lead. Sweden's number 14, the blonde flowing locks of Jonas Forsberg. Sets that play going, but ultimately it breaks down and US gather it again. Sweden haven't really got their game together at all yet in these early stages. Ben. 
Blair O'Connor calls a timeout for US. Hey, hey, hey. Who's giving him a dime? Listen, when it's rock, it's never. rock. Never. If rock's not there, it's swing. Never. Okay. Yeah. If there's a poultry, I'm going in there. The U.S. timeout breaks up. Andy, going swing. I think that needs some explanation. Well, I think he's really saying going swing. And look for number two, Ben Yasadi, who's lining up, oh, about 15 yards to the thrower's left to move to the right to get a dump pass. Number 22, Mike Nevins, is going to go up the sideline and try to get a sidearm pass from thrower Blair O'Connor. O'Connor then tightly marked by Nicholas.